Step back into 1964 with Robin and the Seven Hoods, a classic Hollywood film that takes you on a wild ride through the world of gangsters and humor. Ever wondered which iconic Hollywood actor steals the show? Keep your eyes peeled for your favorite and you might be in for a surprise. This movie isn't just about glitz and glamour, it's packed with funny, shocking, and downright sad moments that will keep you glued to your seat. Curious about lesser-known facts or anecdotes that add a fascinating layer to the story? Get ready for some unexpected revelations. Now, the big question is, what's your most cherished memory or personal experience related to this cinematic gem? We'd love to hear your stories and memories in the comments below. So, buckle up and enjoy the journey through the captivating world of Robin and the Seven Hoods. Your next great story could be just a comment away. Robin and the Seven Hoods presents a tale of light-hearted gangsters engaged in a battle amidst Prohibition-era Chicago. While my childhood admiration for the film remains, revisiting it after a considerable gap reveals a narrative that feels somewhat thinner than remembered. The plot unfolds in a jovial and frivolous manner, blending humor, violence, and a handful of brash songs. Uncredited Edward G.'s cartoony slaughter at the beginning sets a tone that persists throughout. The production values are commendable, but the film's true highlights lie in the Rat Pack set pieces. Bing Crosby, particularly, stands out as the best performer, bringing a touch of seemingly effortless whimsy. Sammy Davis and Dean Martin have their individual moments, with Frank Sinatra shining as always. Notable among these moments are the performances of Crosby, Martin, and Sinatra in style, a complete joy to watch and my kind of town, a perfect triumph. However, without these segments, the film appears somewhat threadbare, emphasizing the challenge of sustaining a reasonable narrative with excessive padding. Despite the film's enjoyable aspects, the climax, marked by the demise of Peter Falk's character, feels dull and humorless. The rushed and somewhat botched conclusion does little justice to the overall comedic tone of the film. If one is not a fan of dry black humor or musical interludes, the appeal of the film might be limited. Bing Crosby's presence remains a consistent positive throughout the film, offering a welcome respite from the occasional dry and tedious stretches involving other characters. The interactions between Falk, Sinatra, Martin, and the less charming Barbara Rush contribute to a heavy-handed spoof lacking in both wit and style. While the film boasts some iconic performers like Alan Jenkins and Jack LaRue, its overall length of 123 minutes seems excessive for this type of derivative jest. In summary, Robin and the Seven Hoods is an entertaining but somewhat uneven film with standout moments primarily attributed to the Rat Pack performances. Bing Crosby's role adds a touch of whimsy, while certain sections, if removed, would leave the film lacking. The film's length and occasional lack of cohesion may affect its appeal, but fans of the era and the Rat Pack will likely find enjoyment in its lively and humorous moments. Edward G. Robinson makes a notable uncredited appearance in the film. Barbara Rush, in real life, outlives all the main male co-stars. The filming process, marred by unfortunate events, turns into a challenging experience. The shadow of John F. Kennedy's assassination looms over the set early in production. Soon after, Frank Sinatra Jr. faces a kidnapping ordeal in his Lake Tahoe dressing room, resolved only after a substantial ransom payment. Victor Buono, who portrays Deputy Sheriff Alvin Potts, reflects on the miracle it was to complete filming under such circumstances. The movie's turbulent production becomes a memorable chapter in its history, marked by unexpected tragedies and challenges. Paul Frees lends his distinctive voice as the uncredited radio announcer in the 1964 film. Noteworthy is the appearance of Philip Crosby playing a hood alongside his father, Bing Crosby. The film includes a regrettable line by Frank Sinatra post John F. Kennedy's assassination. Sinatra, throughout his life, lamented the inclusion of the phrase, you come over like George Washington, I'll send you back like Abe Lincoln. These lesser known details add unique layers to the production, contributing to its historical narrative. Crafted with unexpected twists and challenges, the movie's behind the scenes account becomes a memorable chapter in its history. Robert Falk, who previously played a sheriff in the Rat Pack film Ocean's Eleven, also had a role in this production. This marked the last theatrically released musical for Bing Crosby. Notably, Peter Lawford, originally intended for a role in the film, faced repercussions due to the fallout between John F. Kennedy and Frank Sinatra. As Kennedy's brother-in-law, Lawford bore the brunt of the discord with the chairman of the board. 
These behind the scenes details drawn from reputable sources shed light on the intricate dynamics surrounding the movie's cast and production. The film's narrative becomes even more intriguing with the addition of these lesser known facts, offering a glimpse into the challenges and complexities faced during its making. Crafted with unexpected twists and challenges, the movie's behind-the-scenes account becomes a memorable chapter in its history. Edward G. Robinson Jr. makes a subtle nod to his role in the cake shooting scene from Some Like It Hot, linking the two films. Frank Sinatra's donning of a dark green fedora hat pays homage to Robin Hood, reinforced by his green jacket and vest during a trial scene. This ensemble, more refined than the green long johns mentioned by Dean Martin, possibly references the 1922 Robin Hood film starring Douglas Fairbanks. Tony Basil, known for the song Mickey, is among the dancers, adding a notable presence to the cast. These insights, gleaned from reputable sources, provide an interesting perspective on the film's details and its connections to cinematic history. Crafted with simplicity and precision, these facts contribute to the understanding of the movie's unique elements, offering a glimpse into its production nuances. During the filming of Robin and the Seven Hoods, a significant event coincided with the shooting of the funeral scene. On that day, President John F. Kennedy, a close associate of Frank Sinatra, faced assassination. This unforeseen incident added a layer of somber reality to the movie's production. Sammy Davis Jr. brings a touch of humor to the film by imitating James Cagney, referencing a famous line from the 1931 movie Taxi. The line, come out and take it, you dirty, yellow-bellied rat, is often misquoted as you dirty rat. This nod to Prohibition-era cinema offers a glimpse into the playful dynamics of the cast. In the storyline, Big Jim Stevens, portrayed by Edward G. Robinson, refers to Valentine's Day in connection to the St. Valentine's Day Massacre of 1929. This historical event occurred at a Lincoln Park garage in North Chicago, with Al Capone rumored to be involved. Notably, despite suspicions, Capone was confirmed to be at his Florida home on that day. These insights, drawn from a reputable source, provide a unique perspective on the movie's production, intertwining real-world events and cinematic references. Crafted with simplicity and precision, these facts enrich our understanding of the film's context and historical connections. In the realm of Robin and the Seven Hoods, the storyline draws inspiration from the legendary encounter between Robin Hood and Little John, echoing in Robbo's pool game with long sticks a nod to their legendary battle on a narrow bridge, where, as always, Little John prevails. Originally, Gene Kelly took on the role of producer, but he departed just three weeks before filming commenced. Sources suggest his exit stemmed from disagreements with our lead, resulting from conflicting visions on the extent of dance numbers in the movie. Joey Bishop and Peter Lawford, two lesser-known Rat Packers, are notably absent from this production. Their roles find replacements in Peter Falk and Bing Crosby, respectively, altering the dynamics of the ensemble. These insights, derived from a reputable source, shed light on the film's unique connections to legend and the behind-the-scenes changes that shaped its production dynamics. Crafted with simplicity, this narrative enriches our understanding of the movie's context and historical connections, providing a unique perspective on its development. In the production of the film, a scene portraying a kidnapping incident involving Frank Sinatra's son was initially filmed but later removed from the final cut due to the actual kidnapping of Sinatra's son during the shooting. This decision was made to address the real-life crisis and ensure the safety of the individuals involved. The unexpected turn of events added a layer of tension and complexity to the movie's production, reflecting the challenges faced during its making. The film's behind-the-scenes account reveals this incident, providing a unique perspective on the unforeseen challenges that unfolded during the shooting. The decision to omit the kidnapping scene showcases the delicate balance between fiction and reality in the filmmaking process. This particular episode, drawn from reputable sources, sheds light on the impact real-world events can have on the creative decisions made during the production of a movie. Crafted with simplicity and precision, these facts contribute to a deeper understanding of the film's context and the intricate dynamics faced by the cast and crew. The removal of the kidnapping scene serves as a testament to the adaptability required in the face of unexpected real-life circumstances during the making of this cinematic piece.